So this is about the third or the fourth time I've been to the temple. And I'd actually forgotten it, it got like a retaining wall around the outside. If you're interested in finding out more about it, you probably want to pause the video at this point. There we go. And entrance was free today, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to take you for a walk around it now. As you can see, the weather is not the greatest today, it's a little bit overcast, but it is February. And there's not that many people here. <clears throat> when I cycled up the hill, uh, there was a couple of buses in the car park, but it looks like they've finished their tour, which is pretty good. So I've practically got this place all to myself at the minute. Just a couple of bored looking uh, like guards or whatever they are around. And as you can see, this is the temple itself. Now to be perfectly honest, I have no idea if this has been partially reconstructed at any point. My guess is that at numerous times through the years it has been partially reconstructed. But it certainly doesn't look as bad as the Parthenon, which I don't know if you've visited. The Parthenon is one of those places where it is a very spectacular place, but there is a lot of building work going on and it kind of takes some of the magic away from it. Whereas this one, because of its location, especially after having cycled here, I don't know, just feels a little bit more special somehow, doesn't it? Well, I don't know if you're getting that special feeling, but I am. So apparently this temple forms uh, the third point of what is called a sacred triangle. So there's three temples, there's this one, there's the Parthenon, and there's another temple on, I think it's the island of Aegina, and they form a triangle. The Greeks love triangles. But you can check it out on, a, on Google Maps for yourself, and if I remember, I will put a link down below in the video so that you can have a look yourself. So this temple uh, was dedicated to Poseidon, and there's a few other myths and legends attached to it. So I believe it from here, this was where people would uh, sort of proceed up in a ceremony. I think it's tied into the myth of how the Aegean got its name as well. And most people visit for sunset. So the sunset is over in this direction here and it kind of disappears. You can see the larger island in the background, it kind of disappears over there somewhere and it is a good sunset like I said I've been here three or four times now and it's always a little bit different and always a little bit uh, sort of special and it's pretty obvious why they built this temple here really and in the surrounding mountains there's an area called Lavrio and Lavrio was famous for silver mining and silver was basically how Athens uh, gained its wealth so perhaps this temple was like part dedication to that part god of the sea it's in a very good point. Who knows? I don't think there's that much written about the temple itself. If I do find out though, I'll include some links. Let's take you down to the sea. And what they've done is they've, they've built a path on the site, which you can see here. And that goes all the way down to the sea and along the path there are some viewing points so that you can see the sunset it looks like it might be blocked off currently because it's not the right time of day because i'm here at about i think it's about 11 o'clock now oh, there's a bit of graffiti on that wall it's very naughty not too sure what that says perhaps one of my Greek friends can let me know and apparently uh, perhaps Lord Byron had also left some graffiti on here somewhere I'm not sure if I can find that later I'll try and check it out so there we have it that's the Temple of Poseidon